full body stretch out is our class designation today. So with your mat, hopefully you've got a ball handy. We're going to start right out um, doing our ball walkout. Okay. And we're walking out, just trying to connect knees, hip, spine, all of the parts that need a little bit of uh, limbering. I don't know about you, but um, <laughs> sometimes when I go to bed, everything's fine. And then when I get out of bed, things don't seem so fine. And not that I've hurt myself in my sleep. It's just sometimes my body's like, what happened? So um, I've already treated myself for those conditions, but I'm assuming that perhaps if that's the state of you. This, in my humble opinion, is one of the best places to start when your body just seems a little out of sorts or you seem disconnected in a way. So just the mat helps to keep you from sliding, walk yourself out, go to whatever degree of knee bend feels good. Take yourself back. I didn't even put my head on the ball this time, right? But that doesn't mean I'm not going to. And if you did, you didn't do anything wrong. If you draw down into a deeper knee bin that allows the head to comfortably find the ball, do that, right? Push back, chin to chest, abs engage, sit up. So we are going to just try to keep making this more and more, okay? What you already know to do is once you draw down, instead of sitting up, you're going to start into your pushback stretch. Don't go to your complete full extension line. You're not ready for that. Draw yourself back down, pull your head off the ball, tell your abs, get ready to fire up. As you come into your round, it's fine. Intentionally round. And as you roll, up, spread the feet, and now roll through the leg position. Pull yourself back up and sit up tall. And then begin again. C curve spine. When we float from C curve to S curve, okay, so now as we come into the deep knee bend, believe it or not, you're in S curve, all right? Support your head. Push your body back to its extension. Again, you're testing the waters. Are you ready for full extension? Because if you are, you'll just try to keep going for a straighter and straighter leg. The beauty of having your arms or at least one hand behind your head is to keep giving your heavy head the support it needs so you don't feel neck strain. Roll it down into the bent leg position. Start curling yourself up. We're back to C curve, right? Abs are loaded, right? Push up, stay in C curve and just roll forward into ragdoll roll down. And as you roll forward, start lengthening the legs so you get to experience the hamstring stretch. Glide yourself up, pulling yourself up to your S sit and begin again, float to C curve, walk it out, go into your deep knee bend, which draws you into S, the hands wrap around the head, push yourself to your long stretch, squeeze your buns, brace your body, but yet stretch at the same time, and then bend the legs. You're just bending enough to get you to offload the stretch so that you can roll yourself up. And each repetition that I've done has taken me further and further back. So now I'm not even on my mat, right? You might be not on yours too. So be careful, roll down and then re-straighten the legs. Here's where your body might need a little support. As you re-bend the legs, put your hands on your thighs to help yourself up. You're gonna do one more, right? From S to C, back down to S, right? And then streamline for your full expression of your stretch, right? Re-bend. Pulling the head and shoulders from the ball, floating yourself back into C curve all the way down. 
Hands get to maybe brace on the floor for your straightening of your legs, but it's not necessary. Bend the legs, hands to thighs, up you go. That is your connection to your body, right? Stand up, no ball. You should be starting to feel like, okay, I'm ready to do something. So I always find that when we hit the time change, regardless of which way <laughs> it's gone, spring forward, fall back, I don't know, it'll take me a couple of days just to get back to regulated, right? It's just the most amazing thing. And I don't think I'm being overly dramatic about it. <laughs> It just, it's not like I've willed it into my state of being that I'm going to struggle. It literally is a struggle. Yesterday, I fell asleep around seven. And then I woke up. I mean, I wasn't like in bed, right? So I woke up. And then I realized that I had all of this laundry to fold on my bed. Have you started the next stretch? It's your little IT band stretch with your sweeping arms. Doesn't that feel so good? So now the leg crosses to the front. The back leg is your stretch leg. Let the arms pull away, right? Bring it back. I step forward and float into that leg. So your hands can give you some extra support if you want to go into the stretch and make it like a teapot stretch while you push into the hip line, reach to bring this high reaching arm around sweep so that you feel your leg, hip and shoulder all redirect to the right position. Step back travel forward with it. If you don't want the teapot hand and you want to go a little bit, just slightly different sensation, take the down hand. Can you find the inner thigh with your down hand and just let the fingers kind of trace the leg? My fingers immediately go to the seam on my tights. So I'm gliding my fingers down the seam, bringing this high reaching side around, <sighs> release out of it, try it one more time. So you decide teapot or low arm reaching for the seam of your tights or your leg, whatever you've got on, reach up, swing the hip and shoulder around, let the down arm glide down. And oh, by the way, Right about now, you should be incorporating pelvic tilt. That pelvic tilt is what's going to protect you from crimping through the lumbar release, and it will maximize your stretch. Pull, all right, down arm is gliding or hand to hip, whichever you feel the most comfortable with, and take your head gaze up, look at your hand, bring the hip and shoulder around, pull the belly in, push into the heel of your rear leg, release and relax. Now you need your chair. So your mat, if your mat does what mine does, I keep experimenting with different thicknesses of mats. So I've probably got about seven mats. All right. And um, they're all slightly different. Thinking that one of them is going to be the mat that stays put, doesn't buckle. I'm moving my chair a little bit forward of the edge of my mat, because this is going to be one of our knee. It's a, it's a, knee pain relief activation move for the hamstring, right? So the process of this movement is to help provide, to offload some tension on the knee, but to actually fire up your hamstring to help with crabby knees. So take the leg, extend it and internally rotate. It's not a static stretch. It's a moving activation. That foot is going to drag along the floor and you see you're trying to use the 
pinky edge side of your foot like it's a scoop and you're going to pull it up towards the opposite side of your body up stretch it out internally rotate elongate sit straight <laughs> as the leg is coming across you your body might be inclined to try to rotate the direction that the foot is going that's okay right you just do your best to stay open internally rotate the foot try at some point to get to the outside edge of the foot scooping and pulling because if you're not careful you'll pull with the instep and that's a different move so roll the weight to the outside edge of the foot which initiates this awkward stretch through the ankle and then it creates this strange torque pull look down at your foot is it on its side pull up three, stretch, scoop, four. So we're not gonna go slow, stretch. You now have the basic understanding of the movement. Five, we're doing 15, six. And even if you're like, well, I don't actually feel any specific thing other than it's just a strange thing I'm doing with my leg. If you'll go back to the slower draw. I want you to put your mind into the muscle along the bottom of the leg, which might require you to actually, if you don't feel it firing up, to put your hand back there. And, and if you go from the seated leg, like probing to the active leg probing, you should feel a difference in the musculature back there. That's all you can do is point of reference. It is definitely fired up as it draws, even if it's not pain. We don't want pain. You just want activation. Stretch, scoop. Use the outside edge of the foot. Scoop. Use the outside edge. Do one more. Rotate the foot. Scoop. Turn the ankle under. Ah, release. Shake it out. Okay, leg number two. Internally rotated. I moved my chair forward so my foot wouldn't run into my mat, but you're not going that far under your chair. All right, so here we go. Start pulling. If you're not mindful, you will keep dragging your foot with your arch, right? But as soon as you start the draw in, you're going to try to change the foot angle so that it's the pinky toe this is complicated, right? You start with the big toe. And then as soon as the knee will allow the foot to switch positions, ah, scoop two. And if you're like, I can't articulate my ankles to the point where that facilitates that in time, it will come three stretch and scoop. Four, is the other foot like in a <laughs> balled up toe position, right? Five, check it out. Spread the toes, right? Six. So let's get into the grounding dialogue. I got to do something that was so nice right outside the big window here is like my own private little beach. <laughs> I took the little lounge chair, beach chair, wooden beach chair, okay, stuck it in the sand. I spent 30 minutes both Saturday and Sunday morning, you got about five more of these, and um, drank my coffee, flew my drone, which I thought was so funny, right? So here I am practicing grounding, and I've got my phone hooked up to my drone, but my feet are in the sand. And so I'm like connected to my, you got two more, my little gadget going, this like defies logic, right? I'm trying to ground, but yet I'm still using my gadget. I mean, for 30 minutes, I couldn't even bring myself last one to not get plugged into something, release and relax. All right. So I want you just moving your feet. All right. You're doing like little running in place. We're going to do a little bit of seated running in place, and then we're going to stand up and do a little bit of our bouncing. Open out, open. It's like, what if we were running through tires, right? That's what it should almost feel like, you know, that drill. If your feet were doing um, quick foot drill work, work it in, belly to spine. 
everything is pretty still, right? Open it out. When you open it out, you're trying to not let the knees do that. It's structure, right? Close it in. You see, our stimulation, even though this is full body stretch, we're still trying to stimulate our body, work up the parts, wake up the parts that really need a little extra assistance, which is when we come to our mat, we're really going to get into the nitty gritty of things today. Pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. One more time. Belly to spine, sitting nice and clean. You should feel like you're generating a little bit of heat right now in your body. And now relax. Stand up. Moving your chair, just enough to get it out of your space. Okay, we're into our little bounce. So bouncing on your mat or bouncing wherever, your feet aren't necessarily gonna leave the floor. It might be that you just soften your knees and it's like you're doing little shallow squats. But if you want more, get into it. All right, already today, I've, Okay, so you know, when I've got my session at 6 a.m., that seven to eight o'clock hour is like a, a high functioning hour for me. So um, I've already done a lot of research into stuff. Can you shake a little bit faster? Okay. And some of what it is is TED Talks, right? Something will catch my uh, uh, I, because most stuff is that it's captioned, right? So as it's going across in the captioning, if something about the caption catches my eye, then I open the video. It's so random, but a woman was talking, go faster. You should feel like your body is getting charged up right now, all right? Buns are firing, calves. You don't have to be in full press mode. So if you're if you're cautious with your feet, I'm going to show you side. Okay. So if you're taking caution with your feet, then your knees will look more like this. And the grounding term again, the the root, the rooting will be flat feet. But if you're not considering anything about your feet, then your body will have a little more spring in it. Okay. Because we do want to get the heart rate up just enough, activating all of the parts. And the TED talk this morning, a woman was giving. Can you believe it? On how to lessen your risk of dementia and sleep, quality sleep falls into that category. But what she said next was even more fascinating to me because she said, it's when you sleep that the lymph pertaining to your brain function the lymphatic system as it pertains to your brain function, that's, that's when the brain is in its like reach, not recharging, but it's almost like it's, it's healing mode, release and relax. So many of us only re think about the lymph as in our pits, but you've got a lot of lymphs lymphatic system, lymph nodes in your belly and your brain walk around. So that's going to require a little bit more discovery because it piqued my interest. Just walk around. I want you to look at your mat. I want you to grab your little stretch out strap. Do you have your yoga strap, your little extra stretch out strap? All right, take one hand. My little uh, bit fender keeps telling me that <laughs> I need to update it. Just happens to go right across the screen during class. Ready? So you're not going to do anything drastic. I'm just doing this to show you that one arm's got the strap. Bring the arm up, drape the strap back. Hopefully you've got enough strap so that your other arm can easily get hold. And 
here's what I want. <clears throat> I want your high hand and your low hand to start working towards one another, not with the intention of getting them as close together as possible, but I want you to feel like your hands are at the right spacing so that you can seesaw, you can gently pull up and then in the next breath, pull down. So on the up pull, right, we're getting anterior delt stretch. And then when the other arm pulls down, you're getting tricep stretch. And I just want you to get your spacing right, walk around your space, gently pull up and down, moving through your space, rock the arm up. And in the event, the arm that you pull up doesn't want to go into that stretch, then you just keep holding your down pulling position, right? But if you can do both, you're walking around, change your direction, one's going up, and then a few seconds in the other direction. Now, once you get back to your space, I want you to take the low arm. Well, actually, you're going to take the high arm, release the strap so the low arm has it. And now the low arm drapes over the top, right? Figure out your strap length, start walking around. As you go to pull up on the bottom arm, if that elbow is way away from you, then you're going to be met with some resistance. You want your down elbow, release the strap enough so that your down elbow can initially track under the shoulder. That's where the stretch starts. Pull up, pull down. Do you have too much strap you're working with, right? Did you get the hands appropriately spaced? And maybe as you go to do, because I know that the harder stretch is the pulling up stretch. That's the one that's more intense, right? When you go to pull down, that should be this, wow, really soothing stretch for the tricep. So as you go to work this shoulder in that up pull, don't fight it, be gentle, take a few extra seconds to get into the sweet spot and then rock down. I want you to work yourself back into your space. Give me leg hip taps or toe taps. Keep doing the arm rock, one or two more arm rock. Right, toe tapping, pulling. One more. Now, release, relax. Taking your band, hands are gonna hold, palms forward, right? separate feet. I'm turning to the side, right? But, but what, what you're not really going to notice is my feet are going wider than my mat. So I'm comfortably wide. I want you to start pulling on your strap so that we get tension and you're going to make a beeline for the floor. If you're still looking at the screen like I am, right? You're just letting the arms pull over and then help yourself up. Now, your arms, again, might protest, but can we start by expanding across the front of the body, creating tension? And if you need more like freedom, move your hands wider on your strap so that you can get your arms somewhere, right? Your, everybody's range of motion is different. And the tighter your shoulders are, the more band length you need, right? So just keep going. At some point, if you roll up and you're like, yeah, you're not even holding the band anymore. I'm not, but without the band, look, I only get to vertical. The band helps me get over my head. So do I need to float my arms all the way over my head? This is part of your hamstring stretch. This is part of your full body connection. So I'm gonna go back to holding my band. The key component is, 
take the roundedness out of your spine and activate arms to tension round over. And if you want your arms to go further, then you just keep separating your hand further apart, right? Roll it up. So I just did a complete rollover, right? And now I'm going to do it again. Palms, palms are forward. Hinge, pull on your strap. Going, 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 going. The arms roll over. I can roll them back without releasing my strap. You've got a couple more. I'm going to show you the front view. Your palms start forward. I've got my hands as wide as my band will let me go. Right? Forward roll. The arms come over the top. Now, pull them back. The closer I get my hands together, I will not be able to clear the full rotation. Right? I get hung up. So then I can just slide my hands a little bit wider and get them all the way back down. Last one. <laughs> you pick the version that works for you. I'm now going to go back to interlaced hands. See, that's as far as it goes. And release. We're not looking to dislocate our parts. You just want to work within the framework of what your body can do. The accessory just gives you a little help. Think um, tree pose, right? One foot, let the other foot rest on the ankle. Can you feel your your the ball of your foot kind of just glide up and down the ankle, but try not to glide the front, try to go inside up. Maybe you need your little chair, your foam roller, your wall, whatever you need to put yourself against if balance is the key, right? Pull up, where's the sticking point? Is the sticking point what's happening in the knee? Is it balance or is it hip? I spend a significant amount of time in self-discovery, movement and discovery, because there are things that I cannot do now that I could do, say, even five, seven years ago, right? So here we are. I want you to take your tree pose to its fullest position, which for me, I'm going to assist, right? Here's where you might need your extra little balance. And you're like, that doesn't look like tree pose, but it will. As soon as I get my foot connected to the up inside part of my leg, right? And now at some point, if your knee protests, Right. If we can't get our foot high enough and the knee externally rotated enough, right, the hip open, then your leg won't stay put. So that's your goal is to get off of the knee of the stance leg. We don't want the foot bracing at the knee. It either needs to be above the knee or below the knee. My other leg does it so much more efficiently. I don't have any pain, but I cannot because of if I pull my foot higher, my knee just protests. I can't keep my foot there. So this is my best tree pose on this side, holding for five. Tree has so much more to it, right? Tree can keep going, right? That's your tree pose. Squeezing buns, release, up and release. Okay, other leg. So... The thing that, <laughs> that I saw that prompted me to put myself back into a position that I used to get into with every single yoga class that I did, you see, I've never technically taught yoga because that's not my strength. I enjoy going to yoga classes and Bikram and stretch and all of these other things, but I know where my strengths lie. And in most yoga classes, there's a position where 
literally you're seated you're you're not exactly seated on your feet but your legs are folded under you and they're slightly wider than your hips so the feet are back by your hips and you're resting on your shins and the objection the objective is to lay your back flat to the floor so i see this thing right you're done sliding you're going to pull up i saw the pose and i said oh yeah I used to do that. I used to take a run every day when I lived down the beach a little bit and I would run and I would come back and I would do my stretches on the dock after my running. And this was one of the stretches that I would do for quad and knee and ankle flexibility. It's been years though, since I did that diligently. And now, because I find most people that I work with cannot get into that position, we've actually stopped giving it. So yesterday, as I went into the position and I was like, huh, <laughs> this might explain why my knee acts up because I can't get into this position. So this morning, release and relax, just to give you the quick show of what I'm talking about. I don't expect you to do it. We're gonna move on to something else. The stretch I'm referring to is in yoga, you bring your knees together, you separate your feet so that you're not sitting on your feet and you draw your butt down to the floor. That's where the, that's where the stretch starts, but most people can't get knee compression, right? And then you're actually supposed to lay yourself down with your back flat on the floor. Well, guess what? I used to be able to do that. You're like, yeah, I used to be able to do that too. Why do we stop doing those things? Because they're intense and we don't know how to prop ourselves. You're now coming down to the floor. I want you to get your mat. If it's not already down, your strap, get your yoga block, okay? You're not gonna need your chair anymore. You may need an extra towel, right? If you know your neck is often in the wrong spot, then get your towel or your cushion, right? So that is my new goal for myself. This morning, I already practiced it. I bolstered up as many pillows as I needed to sit on. And then I had myself close enough to my sofa so that I could lean back supported. Right? I had pillows under me and I was right with my sofa so that I could be propped up and supported because ultimately my goal is to be able to get my body flat on the floor comfortably. And can I tell you that doing that twice, I did it yesterday and I did it today, already the sensation that is a little nagging sensation in my knee because it's triggered by my calf and my ankle, is already feeling better. So I, these things, the positions that your body really fights. Okay, so you know how um, this may or may not be something that's suitable for you. Is it possible? Be prepared for your block to fall off your foot. Can you even get it there? Now that it's there, does it seem like it's cockeyed? Can you articulate your angle of your foot so that the block is resting? And how hard is it to get your toes <laughs> to touch the block? Like my big toe will touch the block, but my other toes, the extensors, are keeping the other toes. I now got my other toes to touch the block. So all of my foot is connected with the block. How are you doing? Okay, that's your static position. Can you tilt the toes towards you a little bit? All right, here we go. Your leg can be as bent as you want it to be, 
or as straight as you want it to be. And I want you to try to angle your toes down towards you a little bit and then find neutral. Rebend the leg, let the other toes try to get all of the toes connected to the block and then bring the other leg up. The other leg is going to stretch out and sweep back up. In the event the block keeps falling off of that high leg, that becomes very telling to you. You're like, really? What's it telling me? It's telling you that you're not able to keep your foot in a flexed neutral position. You do not have to have your leg straight. You bend your leg as much as you need to to control the angle of your ankle. All right, so now I want you to try to take five sweeps with your straight leg. You're like, that's very close to being ab work. It is. When the sweeping leg comes up, if you need to adjust your block, then gently slide the block to a better position. Down the leg goes, up the leg goes. If your block falls off, don't worry about it. Try again. When this leg sweeps up, can you switch the block? Bend the leg. This might be the hard part. Like, how do you get your leg out of your way? How do you bend the leg enough, right? Reach up, put the block on the foot, and then try to get the leg back to neutral. Wow. So you know, this is not a movement that I've practiced prior to presenting it. So I never know what's going to happen. But I saw this and I was like, wow, that block really does dial in the body. Right? It makes you more attentive. So here you go. Block is up. You're getting, and because the block doesn't hardly weigh anything, right? It's like, is it really there? If you weren't looking at it with your own eyes, you might not even feel like you had anything on your foot. But how much of your foot can you get connected to the block? Is it just the ball of the foot? Is it just the heel of the foot? Can you feel the tips of each little toe touch the block. Whew. All right, so you're going to get yourself settled in leg is bent or straight, whatever you want. The other leg is going to sweep for five reps, five inhale down. All right. All right, here you go. That's rep number three. Just keep looking at your foot. If it's wiggling and wonky and you only have the big toe touching the block, try to get the tips of the other toes to touch the block. Wow. Make this next one your last one. And grab the block. Okay, set the block off to the side. This next one is gonna be so much more than what it initially seems. So barely pick up a leg, the arms are in T, the leg is just high enough for you to clear the foot that's still on the floor and the leg rotates. This is called reverse scorpion. Bring it back to the middle, plop. Pick up leg number two, just high enough to clear leg number one, swing it towards the extended arm. Oh, release. We are not holding the stretch. We are just trying to float from side to side, okay? So now, when you get the leg swinging that directs your gaze towards the screen, here's where the next part of the stretch kicks off. So you're going to bend the legs enough to let the back relax so that you can pick up your head, raise the far arm, and you're going to close the book stretch. And you're going to glide that moving arm over the bottom hand, pulling it back, go back to opening the book, the leg tracks down, sweep yourself to flat, leg number two, do the reverse scorpion stretch, softening the knees, take your far reaching arm, pick up the head, close the book and let the hand travel beyond the lowered extended arm, pull back, the head comes to the floor, the leg swings back, moving on or adding on, same thing. 
you're doing reverse scorpion initiates the stretch the leg lifts the leg starts sweeping as you start sweeping pick up the head close the book we're going further can you now glide through you're looking at the screen slide the leg down keep gliding keep gliding keep gliding because now you're on your elbow keep gliding keep gliding keep gliding turn the head bring the other leg up into its figure four. Now you're like, okay, I'm not looking at the screen anymore. Exactly. Everything that you just did, you're gonna undo. Slide the figure four leg down, prop yourself up on the elbow. The arm is connected to the floor and you're rolling back, opening, go back and you should be in flat position. Are you ready? And if you're like, I kind of got to watch that again, we're going to do the other side. Your initial movement is the reverse scorpion, which is just lift the leg and start swinging it across the body. Now we're adding and closing the book. So we need to soften the knees, pick up the head, pick up the arm, look at the arm that's on the floor. Let the hand glide beyond that arm and you keep gliding so that you can get on your elbow. And then the other leg comes up to figure four. Are you kind of going, this is complex. That figure four leg straightens out, prop yourself up, push yourself back over. Here we go. Last time the leg sweeps, the arm lifts, the body comes with it like you're rolling out of bed and it glides. And at the point where it starts gliding beyond the hand, the leg can't stay bent, right? The leg needs to straighten back out because you're transferring your weight and you're bringing the other leg up to figure four. I know this is the first time for this one. Slide the figure four leg down to straight, bend the other leg up, track yourself back. This is the last one to the other side. You get flat, both legs straight. You have to finish on the other side. That completes our set. Pick up the leg, start pulling it across you. Pick up the head, take the far arm, start closing the book, your head still off the floor. And now that leg that's bent, that one's gonna straighten because you're pushing yourself up and you're letting the other leg slide up to figure four and your body should be virtually resting flat on the chest. If this is where you got to, this is where it ends because now we move into the next phase. This figure four leg, you're gonna straighten it and you're gonna probably have to shimmy yourself back onto your mat. Scoot yourself over, All right? Now you're in modified Cobra. So from modified Cobra, press the elbows into the floor, right? Get the hips settled, shoulders out of the ears, right? The legs are long, tops of feet are active to the floor. Hopefully you can turn your head side to side. If your body, if your chest and torso are kind of collapsed, then when you go to turn your head, your jawline will essentially run into your shoulder. And with the turning of the head in that collapsed position, it might actually feel like you're crimping your neck. So push off the elbows firmly so that your neck elongates and you can freely turn your head, right? And as you turn your head, we're actually going to do more than just turn the head. I want you to turn the head and I want you to keep twisting, right? So that as you turn your head, the elbow, the direction that you turn your head, that elbow takes a little bit more weight because you're trying to twist your trunk just a little bit to look back at your foot. Don't strain yourself. Don't fight it. Just prop up, start turning your head and go, oh, I'm gonna put a little bit more weight on that elbow so I can twist myself around a little bit more. So restabilize, if that doesn't feel comfortable and you're scared, just stay in basic modified Cobra. But if you can, you're pressing firmly into the ground, your neck is long, you turn your head, and then you lean into the arm, 
that guide you around. The stretch should be more intense through the oblique wall on the far side. Bring it back to neutral. That's the part that might be scary, right? This is your last one. Push into the elbows, turn your head. Lean on that elbow a little bit so that you can get yourself around your stretch a little bit more and release. Take the arms, slide them forward. How far away from you is your stretch out strap? Can you get it? Say, oh, Lordy, we love the stretch out strap. It's a love hate relationship, right? Because it's like, oh, what's she going to do? Well, I'd love for you to take your strap, work it around you, put it across your low back, and then with your palms up. So I'm going to keep my chin on the floor for a moment, okay, just to get settled in here. But I want your hands to get close enough together. Here's how you know if you're holding the strap right. You separate your hands as much as you need to so that the elbows, the fronts of the elbows touch the floor. All right. And then I want you to just wiggle the hips a little bit, get everything back to its nice straight line, pull the hip bones to the floor, squeezing your buns, start peeling your chest and your chin from the floor, and now look down. Don't let go of your strap, just lengthen your arms so the strap slides just past the bum, all right? But the arms are straight, shoulder blades are pulled back. And now turn your ear, one ear down, slide the hands back up, let the elbows soften. I can't rest my head all the way down because of my mic, but you should have your body fully relaxed. And then it starts again. Activate the legs, squeeze the buns, peel the face from the mat, and then look down. Slide the strap across the bum to your fully lengthened arms and try to squeeze your shoulder blades and then turn your head the other way. Bring the ear to the mat, slide the hands back up into the small of the back, let the elbows relax. Okay, do it again. Squeeze the buns, lift the face, turning and looking at the mat. Lengthen the arms you're adding on. Get the arms to their full length and then lift the legs. Turn the ear to the mat. Slide the hands up. Relax the legs. Relax the elbows. You're resting. This is the last one. Tighten your parts. Lift the face and chest. Look at the floor. Slide the arms to their length. Shoulder blades retract. Pick up the legs. Bring everything down, release and relax. I want you to help yourself up. Come into your side sit. So offset the legs, side sit. I'm just going to get everything back to its squared up line. Okay. We know that's not going to stay that way. Okay. Can we go lean? Take your stretch. <sighs> now, you're going to rotate your arm and your trunk towards your mat. And then this arm is now going to slide diagonally away from you uh, to get more stretch. And then rock back onto the elbow, this big sweeping arc Use that arm, maybe even a little bit of the hand if needed to pull you up and float your stretch this way. Wow. So think like S, you know, how your arms are making an S. And then the other way, the elbow comes down. Twist your body towards the mat. Once the hand makes contact, you move diagonally. If you need your trailing leg to straighten out, it doesn't have to stay bent. Pull yourself up. Dramatic arc 
around your body because that starts setting the arms for this S curve. Again, unfold yourself, elbow down. Your body is going to lengthen forward, but we don't want to stay unsupported here. So just let the arm come to the floor. It could be palm down and glide. Don't overstretch. It's on you to know your limits. And from here, the hand stays connected to the floor and it just starts coming around you to put yourself back in the right position to leverage yourself up and S. Oh. Release. Unfold. If you're like me, You've got way more mat on one side of you. So we know what to do, right? We can use our QL to get down on the other side. If it doesn't matter to you, then don't put yourself in the middle. But for me, like oddly enough, I kind of like to have a little bit more mat. This, as I bring this to your attention, this might be what's happening with your body is one side has such an awkward sit to it. For me, my left hip into internal rotation is really resistant. I can get myself where I need to be, but I have to encourage that leg to stretch away from me. It doesn't go there naturally. And yet when I glide it to its more open line, I feel better, even though it's still an awkward sit. If you can't get comfortable, shim, put something under that front butt cheek, or straighten out the leg because you can, well, I'm going to do a repetition with this leg straight. Same process. Elbow down, big stretching arm, twist towards the mat, which includes the bottom leg, right? Both legs, I should say. Aim for the floor, let the hand diagonally reach. That hand stays on the floor so that you keep weighted in that elbow as you pull and transition yourself up to this big dramatic arc. And then the arms try to conform to an S. And now I'm going to take myself back into my bent leg. All right. Elbow comes down. It's gentle. Maybe not so gentle. The slow rate of getting into position, it's like you're moving in slow motion, not because you need to, but because it takes more control, right? Come up, get ready, push from the elbow, take your arms, move that back leg away a little bit, let the arms trade shapes to S, lean towards the back leg, and down. This is the part I was talking about. It takes a lot of control to move slowly. Stretch, turn towards the mat. This is your last one here. Lengthen, the hand touches, and then you get to do a little more glide. Lean onto that elbow as you trace the big arc around your body. That elbow power pushes you up. Transition arms, ah, right? It's like, it might not look like an S on this side because it's backwards. Release and relax. All right. We are not done. Our little quadriceps need attention. So we're gonna start with a, um, the flossing, it'll be your gliding of strapping the top foot. Okay, so you're gonna lay on the side that you have not strapped. Okay, legs are bent. This is you working with your accessory. How much strap do you need? Okay, leg is straight. 
Do you need your yoga block or your cushion? I'm just going to use my arm. Here we go. Pull it back. The, my strap is just gliding through my hand, so I'm not overstretching. Anchor it across the shoulder, and then pelvic tilt. Oh, that just feels so good. And then release it. And as the arm and leg come forward, I'm going to pick up my head, and I'm going to use my bottom arm to swing my leg forward to get a maximum stretch. And then I put all of my parts back where they were. Head comes to the arm, zip and tuck, quadricep stretch. Releasing the quad stretch, head is up. And if you're laying on your towel, then you won't need to pick up your head because your head will be neutral. I'm having to keep adjusting myself because I'm using my arm, okay? This is your last one. So here's your hold position but it's not the last one for the quadricep stretch. Move the majority of your strap out of your way and start positioning yourself so that you can go face down with the maintaining your strap. And then wiggle the hips, settle in, get the legs nice and close together. I've got my forehead on the floor, so my neck is neutral. My elbows are tracking nice and tight towards my head. And I'm just rocking side to side to try to get everything as close to being in perfect alignment, which has both hip bones active to the floor. All right. If your knee is flexible enough for you to go hand to foot, then just move the strap to the opposite hand, let your hand find your foot, and then try to reset your hips, okay? Zipping and tucking, more isn't necessarily better. Better alignment is better. All right, release out of it, release the strap, help yourself up. I'm going to swing myself end to end and do my other leg. And this is what we finish on, right? We finish from hamstring to quad stretch. We have twisted, right? We've side body stretched. We've modified cobra stretched. So we've gone side bending forward and back flexing, right? We've taken our leg up, we bent it back. We've done every conceivable angle that we can get into with our body. And it should feel like it's been gently warmed everywhere. <sighs> All right. So with you holding your strap and your leg forward, that stretch should just be running all the way up the rump, the back of the leg. All right. So this time I'm going to keep my head on the floor because I don't need my, I don't need a block. My neck and my shoulder are comfortably aligned. So I'm not having any neck pressure. All right, pulling the leg back, hooking, right? How much strap do you need? Squeezing into pelvic tilt. In pelvic tilt, I often feel like my body line, my upper trunk is like that of a crunch so that my ribs are down and that allows me to put my knee where it needs to be to get quad stretch. Just that's a side note. Okay, head back down, swing the leg forward, pull on the strap, flex the foot, get that stretch to the whatever degree feels good to you and swing it back. Okay, there we go. Zipping and tucking. Ribs are down, pelvic tilt, push the knee back until you feel that front thigh go, wow, that's amazing, okay? Last one with the leg coming forward, pull on the strap. Maybe you're like so flexible that you can get your hand to the foot and it's the hand that's guiding the foot. Oh my gosh, hand, hand to foot and strap just radiates that stretch in, in an entirely different position. And now, as the leg floats back, tell yourself, get the rest of your strap from behind you. You want it in front of you so that you can redirect your body face down. All right, wiggling the hips, 
getting both arms actively participating. I like to put my elbows parallel to each other. My face is forehead down. I'm pulling on the strap with both hands, but I don't need both hands, right? And now if you feel like your thighs are not together, release and let out a little bit of strap so that you can get your legs together and you can rock the hip bone on the stretching leg side down to the floor and then reset the tug. If you're going to try hand to foot, now would be the time to go for it. There you go. Zipping and tucking, rocking. Sometimes the you have to know that flinching, right? If you get a spot that makes you flinch, wince, whatever, whatever reaction you want to label it as, often that's just something that is getting pinched out of an alignment issue. So if you offload some of the tension and then try to wiggle yourself back into better alignment and then reset the stretch, you might have a very different sensation. Don't hold movements that inflict the pinch point. Release and relax. You're going from your flat to modified cobra, from modified cobra to cat back, from cat back to downward dog to standing. Ready? Modified cobra. <sighs> Tuck the elbows in nice and tight. Start inching your body up. You don't have to stay on your knees for long, but if it feels good for you to go to hands and then cat back, do it. And then from cat back, do a little relaxed spine. Stub the toes, pike the buns up, drive the heels to the floor, say hello to your calves, walk the hands back. Soften your knees. You always want to feel the weight controlled through your legs. Get off the weighted arms so that you can roll up carefully. Lift and breathe. Release and relax. You are free to roam. 